We're going to take a look at Eno Benjamin today, and you're going to see he's always been a very quick player with good acceleration. You're going to see him take this handoff, and you see that he's got a pulling guard working to the edge, but he's trying to take on the linebacker, 57. Number seven is inside his block, so Benjamin's going to have to bounce this outside. He considers the inside, sees the potential there for the defender, and he's also kind of pressing that a bit because he knows the defender has that inside leverage, so he wants to keep the defender there and then bounces it outside. And he's fast enough to beat that linebacker to get five yards on this play. It doesn't look like much in terms of a gain, but again, five yards on this play, and it's not very well blocked. Good burst. Benjamin's really the Chase Edmonds replacement in this offense, and you're going to see him here flank to the left. He's going to run this little circle route or Texas route, breaking back inside, makes the catch just inside the oncoming linebacker, transitions immediately downhill, makes it tough for the defenders there. They got to all wrap them up and try and hold them off from getting into the end zone. Does a good job there. While you don't see much from this pass play in terms of yards after the catch, you see that he makes the first man miss and even makes the second man miss there. It takes really three attempts to tackle him in a short area because he's known for short area quickness and his movement. Where I have concerns about Benjamin at times is that I've always joked that he's like 80 proof LaShawn McCoy, meaning that he has a lot of moves. He's a creative runner, but he can get a little too creative at times. You're going to see here where you run this play, it's, you know, it's designed to for him to work inside that double team and he's got open space here against this linebacker. Instead of really hitting it hard and just getting downhill and making the linebacker tackle him and getting an easy gain of five to seven yards, he tries for the big play. He sees most likely his slot receiver here on 33 and thinks, if I can make him miss and make a jump cut, I can dip this outside and I have two blockers to the right of me. But the problem with that, obviously is that he's making one too many moves and he just needs to hit it straight downhill and make 57 tackle him instead of trying to cut across his face and invite a better angle. If he stayed downhill, the defender's hitting from an indirect angle. Because he tries to cut across the face, now it's a direct angle and he's dropped. This is the thing that he's got to get better at because really when you look at it from this perspective, you can see the amount of space that he really has at the snap of the ball right here. If he can just angle downhill and continue to angle outside, you can see that the other linebacker has his chest turned to the left boundary. He could have angled this further to that side and get an easy five to seven. The other concern with Benjamin is because he's prone to using the dynamic cuts, the jump cuts, the jump stops, he's prone to losing his balance in situations that, you know, are unproductive and, and, you don't need to make these types of cuts on a regular basis, especially here. Just hit it up into this line. There's a nice little tight crease there. Let's take a look at it again from this perspective. And you're going to see with the puller right here, there's the double team. Get skinny behind your puller and get inside. Yes, there's a linebacker here, but you can see that the tight end is going to get a chance to get at least a body on him. He should be able to run through that and get the tough yards. It may only be a couple yards, but it would be enough. Or at least be able to press a little bit more to that outside, stop here, and cut back inside and force that defender who's working outside here who ends up making the tackle, force him outside, and you can cut it back in. But you can't do that with jump cuts. When you make these large jump stops and jump cuts like that, you can't be as efficient with pressing and, and turning back inside. He already opens his hips. That's fine. But this jump stop, it's all in or nothing. And he slips off balance, not good. When Benjamin maintains better control of his feet and he's a little more efficient with his feet, he can execute these cutbacks. You see right here, that's very good. This is a good example of him not getting too wild with his footwork. And right here, he does make a little bit of a, it's not even a jump stop. He doesn't hop. You see there's no wide hop here. He comes to a stop by by dropping his weight a little bit, being able to angle. He's under more control with his feet. He's in a more stable position, and he can now execute that cutback, and he gains nine yards. And because he's a dynamic movement runner, a scat back type of player with good burst and decent speed, 
what you're going to see is that he can err towards the side of not hitting creases decisively. He's looking at this linebacker the entire time. And instead of hitting that hole and making the linebacker tackling, tackling him and taking what he can get with the design of this play, he tries to bounce it further outside. And it, as he continues to do that, he ends up taking the loss here. You're going to see it right here in even greater relief. You see number 57? He's watching 57 this entire time. Just take this crease downhill. Take on the linebacker. You may only get two or three, but it keeps your team in a better down and distance script. Instead of heading downhill here, he keeps looking for the bigger thing until he ends up taking a loss. Experience in the receiving game, no problem. We're going to see a lot of good receptions out of him on his tape if you look a little deeper. You can see also he can be used in the screen game, and he's very decisive. I know this looks very easy because all he's doing is catching the ball and heading straight downhill, but he's decisive about it. He transitions well downhill. We saw it on the last play, and you can see that when he gets into space, he has decent bursts to get past his initial blocks. He beats 57 you know, right up that flat. Really nice work. And when you can get Benjamin past the line of scrimmage, he's going to be pretty decisive. He's got a big crease. Gap plays are good for him as long as there's enough space here. Kind of like DeAndre Swift. He's more of a space back. He's kind of also a DeAndre Swift-like player. Maybe a little bit more elusive than Swift in certain ways, but also a little more boom-bust than Swift in terms of, you know, because of the dynamic movement. He's not as efficient with his feet as Swift can be. Where the Cardinals can really get a lot out of Benjamin is misdirection plays. Watch the two linemen on the left pull to the right, force the defense all the way to the right side, and then him take that ball to the left with blockers out front and get him into space. Misdirection plays can work very well for him because of his initial burst. He's not a big-time speedster, but he's quick. And that initial change of direction quickness, initial acceleration, can work very well on deception plays like this. And you're going to see the acceleration out of his cuts. Watch him take this to the right side and watch the cut right there and accelerate through. That gets him past number 49 for the most part. I mean, that's, that's a hallmark of his game is to be able to transition downhill with one step and really explode through that cut. That's an, that's an area of his game that's always been really strong. At heart, he's a cutback runner. And you see this a lot when he runs more zone or gap oriented plays where there's man on man blocking you can see that he's often looking at the second level looking at the linebackers which is good and being able to press and then make that quick cut back that's the strength of his game but you know he's not going to get much in the second level when it's basically after contact he's going to keep his legs moving he'll get his pads low but he's not a powerful back Benjamin functions in offense again like Swift. He, you know, give him those open field or delays or draws or counters where the defense maybe overplay one side and then the middle's left wide open like right here. You know, he can he's like a good jab. If if the offense is a boxer, he's kind of that jab that occasionally can stagger you, but you can, you know, you can kind of flick out there and and keep a keep the defense at bay a little bit and that's how he functions a lot as in the short area passing game in the run game where you're maybe they're expecting the hook or they're expecting an uppercut and you just deliver that jab just at the right time so that's kind of what he functions as not a big play guy but he can get you some chunk plays on occasion